This week in Microsoft Flight Simulator, we have a new free airport available to download from Vertical Sim. Orbex show off a new improved Sydney cityscape, and a Sobo Studio discuss the roadmap for bug fixing. Let's jump in. Third party developer Vertical Sim has released their first airport. This one is First Flight Airport, a public use airport in North Carolina located near Kill Devil Hills. The airport is actually famously known for being the location of early pre flight experiments by the Wright brothers, and in fact, the release from Vertical Sim actually contains a memorial in the airport. This is far from a large airport, but it's a nice addition to have, all the more so because this release is free. It can be downloaded from the Vertical Sim website through the link in the video description. In other releases, Orbex have released a new trader for an improved cityscape for Sydney. Now, this is definitely an update which is much needed as the default Sydney has many problems, and a lot of landmarks are missing from there. This paid update will contain many landmarks, which includes the improved Harbour Bridge as well as the Opera House, along with numerous other features, of course. Orbex themselves state that the assets are high res and are produced to a good level of realism. Now, I haven't seen this firsthand myself, of course, but hopefully uh, Orbex have learnt from the issues they had with the original London cityscape, and, uh, and the Sydney cityscape won't suffer from those. When it releases, the cityscape will be available from both the in game marketplace as well as the Orbex website. Now, moving on to the next patch. Asobo Studio have confirmed that the next patch update will be released next week on the 13th of October. This update will focus on a few fixes and other improvements. Now, it's no secret that right now there are many issues with Microsoft Flight Simulator, and in some ways I think it's reasonable to point out that it's actually now in a worse state than it was since launch. Although to be fair, some of the show-stopping bugs of course have been fixed. Now, all of this has in no way escaped Microsoft or Sobo's attention. They're very much aware of this, and it's motivated them to say they will be a more open and communicative rather, in the future. Now, as a start to this, they have redesigned the feedback snapshot, which is quite an important part of the developer updates now. The new update actually contains a somewhat of a roadmap with a schedule as to when certain bugs may or may not be fixed. Now, there's two points here that I want to make about this. The first is that some people may not be happy to see this work schedule, as uh, Sobo have been very, very open about when an issue is going to be and when it's not going to be addressed. So some people may feel that the wait is a little too long on some of this. But the second point I want to make is that personally, I feel that this is absolutely fantastic. Regardless of how long it actually takes to get an issue fixed, it's nice to see a studio being so open about their workflow. So this is a very good view, as, or a very good move rather, as far as I'm concerned. So let's take a look at some of these fixes or some of these bugs. As usual, I won't go through all of the things on the list here. For that, you can check out the dev update yourself. What I will do though is talk about the ones that particularly stand out to me. One at the top of the list then are the Garmin G1000 and G3000. These have some autopilot issues, as we well know. This is something which, is, which has affected me on nearly every play session. It's been there right since the start. And I know it has affected a lot of other people too. Right now, this is listed as not started, which means that Asobo had not began investigating the issue yet. But that said, a fix is scheduled for update 9. For reference, the update coming on the 13th of October is update 4. Now moving on, the problem of buildings being too high due to the last patch has been fixed in update 4, which is the next update. And on a more serious issue is the crash to desktop without an error message that some people are encountering. This is another one that is currently listed as not started. There's not a mention of when this one will be fixed, however. The situation is also the same for the low resolution ground textures, which appeared with the most recent update. So it looks as though Asobo are acknowledging these, but as yet haven't begun investigating the problem. Also, ever since the sim was released, people have been commenting on the lack of real-time air traffic. Asobo have acknowledged this, however, it is currently in the backlog, and as such hasn't yet been scheduled for a fix, so basically Asobo don't see this as a priority right yet. Flight control sensitivity is a big problem. 
not only for regular control inputs, but also for crazy sensitive trimming. This is something I've seen mentioned all around the internet, especially on the official forums. This one is going to be fixed, and it's going to be fixed in update 5, and I'm, I'm glad to see that the fix for this isn't too far out. Now I'm going to jump over the rest of the problems here. Again, do check out the full image if you want to see it for yourself. It's available as a link in the video description. I'm going to jump all the way down to the point right at the bottom, which is issue number 30. And I particularly want to mention this because it's affected me on nearly every play session since the recent patch. And this is in regards to the mouse stopping interacting with the virtual cockpit. Now, it's also a problem that I know occurs persistently. And right now, this one is listed to be investigated. So hopefully, Asobo can actually get an update on, out on this sooner rather than later. So then, overall, this latest developer update is fairly densely packed in terms of information. Not so much in where the sim is heading in the future, but rather in terms of what Asobo and Microsoft actually want to get fixed, what type of things they want to address on that wish list. And yes, there is a new wish list here. I'm not talking about it today because it's pretty much unchanged from the past time or the previous time I actually discussed it. Again, it's available in the link below. So that pretty much brings us to an end of this video. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.